this together, we are absolutely inspired by the emergence of these digital battlegrounds across life sciences and the potential to positively impact the industry, healthcare professionals, and patients. We appreciate the time you guys spent with us and please reach out to continue the discussion. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is uh, Jordi Piera. I'm the director of the digital health strategy of the Catalan Health Service. And today I am going to speak uh, about the digital health strategy for Catalonia and which is our view for, for an open future. I would like to thank uh, our colleagues here from Giant Health for having me today. And I hope that you, that you enjoy the, the presentation. So I'm, I'm sharing my, my screen now. So, uh, well, my presentation is structured in, in five uh, different blocks. At the very beginning, I will talk to you about uh, some characteristics of our health system. Secondly, I will go into the digital health platform, which is the current status of, of development. Afterwards, I will go into the limitations of the, of the current model, and which is our thinking around, around that. Then uh, I will let you know about how we uh, created uh, or put in place this new digital health uh, strategy. And finally, I, I will go a bit more in, in detail and will explain you which is our view for, for an open future. So starting uh, at the very beginning and in regards of the, of the Catalan Health Service. Well, as you know, Catalonia, it's still a region of Spain, uh, northern east. 7.7 uh, .7 million inhabitants and uh, we have a, a health system which is very similar to the one that uh, is in the UK so it's a national health system beverage model where uh, we have full competence uh, in, in the delivery and also in the planning of our healthcare system as part of the decentralization process of the of the Spanish government given to every of the 17 autonomous uh, communi communities. So everyone is covered uh, by, by, by the public insurance, which is the, the, the Catalan Health Service. The budget overall for the, for the Catalan Health System is 20,000 uh, million euros. And we have, a, I would say, one of the characteristics that distinguishes us from, from all the rest of uh, Spanish uh, healthcare systems is the high heterogeneity of uh, service provider organizations. We have more than 160 healthcare provider organizations that uh, deliver healthcare services across, across almost 1,000 facilities that are split uh, across, the, across the territory. Another characteristic, and it's linked to the, to the, to the heterogeneity of, of our system, is the high amount of uh, health related applications that we have. Uh, a recent survey told us that we have more than 16,000 uh, applications across the, across the system. Uh, the good news is that for primary care, we just have uh, a unique uh, electronic medical record system. For specialized care and intermediate care, we have more than 29 different products, uh, which doesn't mean installation, so every installation can be can be different from the from the other, and for social care record, currently we have uh, more than ten uh, different systems, and that's more or less an overall picture of the of the of the Catalan health system. So moving forwards, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the roadmap, or which is the the, the journey that we have followed uh, over the years. So this journey would start for me uh, late in the 80s or uh, 90s when uh, the deployment or the big deployments of, of EMRs happened here within our system, uh, either in primary care and also in, in, in specialized care and also for the, for the social care records. After that and uh, after many failed attempts, we were able to, to put in place a, a national patient index, which is uh, unique, of course and uh, it's providing services to the overall population of, uh, of Catalonia and uh, identifying uh, in a unique manner uh, every other patient that is uh, insured by the, by the Catalan Health Service. After that, uh, another big project that we were able to deploy at scale is the electronic prescribing system, uh, we call it CIRE, uh, currently with uh, more than 416 uh, million prescriptions, more than uh, 37,000 professionals 
uh, using it and with, well, more than 1,300 uh, million of dispensed uh, medicines overall uh, since the year 2006. Another big step in our journey was the, the shared electronic health record of, of Catalonia. This is a, a platform that ensures the continuity of care in between such an heterogeneous ecosystem as the one we have here. Obviously, we started uh, in year 2007 with uh, non-structured information, so we started uh, exchanging PDF files. But right now, uh, well, the situation has been changing over the years. And more or less right now we have, I would say, 70% of the information comes in a, in a structured manner into, into the shared electronic health record of Catalonia. Then building on top uh, of that project in year 2009, we were able to deploy what we call the, the, the personal health record of, of Catalonia or the, or the patient folder. Uh, we call it My Health. And uh, well, we have right now more than 3.1 million citizens that have been registered of course uh the situation was not like this uh prior to the to the coronavirus pandemic but well with the with the pandemic and and with the need of citizens uh to interact with the with the health system the usage has has exploded and well this is data from last week 3.1 million uh citizens in year 2014, uh, we put in place uh, a care process management tool. It's meant to, to ensure the referrals among the different uh, healthcare providers. And right now, well, uh, it has managed more than 12.6 uh, million referrals. And then uh, I would say one of the last big deployments that we have conducted is the establishment of a central infrastructure for digital imaging, uh, which is a central pack system. It's holding right now more than 4,000 uh, 4, million uh, images. And the idea here is to, uh, well, avoid every other hospital or clinic or center to have their own PACS infrastructure because, you know, this is, uh, in terms of scalability, this is not very efficient. So we decided to put one in place in order that uh, only hospitals and, and clinics would have uh, the latest years, a uh, small cachet in there but taking advantage of having a, a central infrastructure now that the communications allow a, a fast uh, download from, from the central server. And uh, I would say the final step, and I think this has been as everywhere else also, is the, the, the big deployment of remote consultations. It's something that uh, either the, in a, the asynchronous or the synchronous way, uh, we had it in here, it was deployed, but it was not very much used. But uh, with, the, with the pandemic, it exploded the, the usage. Right now, we have more than uh, 5 million remote consultations that have been performed, most of them uh, within last and, and, and the current year. So here we have a, a nice review of the, of, the, of the digital health platform of Catalonia. As you can see, we have a, a central piece where, where we have positioned uh, all these uh, different tools that I was mentioning before. This is systemic uh, tools that are used by all the Catalonian healthcare uh, landscape. And outside, uh, I have left uh, some, some bits and pieces. We have uh, on the top left corner the, the, the personal health record because uh, in there, we are also integrating with different uh, apps and wearables. So that's the idea to, to have it outside because here it's where also startups and other companies integrate with, with our system. Uh, in the top right corner, and I think this is very important for, for the things that I will explain later on, we have uh, all the data analytics and informational infrastructure and all of our classical uh, business intelligence infrastructure where every other healthcare provider, uh, it's sending us information and helps uh, the Catalan Health Service with the planning activities and, and billing and, uh, and all that sort of thing. And outside, <coughs> uh, down right and down left, we have the, the systems for, for primary care and also for hospitals that are not central, even though in primary care we are almost half a unique system, it has an adoption of 98%. Still, we have about 2% of primary care centers that are not, uh, not using it yet. So, <coughs> uh, after many years, well, you can imagine that uh, the journey here uh, has been 
it's it's long and it's uh, we would call it a, a, a mature ecosystem and as you have seen uh, and I was telling at the very beginning uh, more than 16,000 different uh, applications for this uh, we say that uh, all this data is not following the patients and uh, all this uh, business logic and data models are buried into this, uh, these applications. Second, uh, well, the solutions uh, are part of uh, what we would say or what we say a, a, a first wave of digitalization. Uh, but well, they start to be old fashioned, they are not uh, ergonomic and, and the satisfaction from professionals uh, is not good in regards of, uh, of them, especially when it comes to the electronic medical records. Uh, third point is that, uh, well, we have managed to ensure uh, to some extent the, the continuity of care through, through, through our healthcare provision uh, by putting in place platforms such as the shared electronic health record of Catalonia or the process management tool but still, when we are uh, sharing information uh, within these parties through interoperability, uh, we see that uh, most of the times we need to reach uh, a consensus, uh, which is the minimal information that we can share. And most of the times we see that, uh, well, some clinical concepts, when they are represented into the technical uh, landscape, they do not match in between the different parties. And that's what we call the, the semantic incoherence in between these uh, interoperability interfaces. And that's for us uh, another problem because we lose uh, within the process of interoperability a lot of granularity uh, when it comes to the process management. Uh, obvious, uh, you can imagine this is very high costs uh, of maintenance uh, plus the solutions being old we say that this is going everything into, into technical debt. So we are, we are spending too much money and it's very difficult to, 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 well, to keep the pace of uh, these investments. Of course, uh, this poses difficulties when, when scaling up innovations. Uh, when one of our healthcare providers uh, is able to develop an innovation, when we try to scale this up uh, in routing care across the healthcare system, well, this means plenty of uh, different adaptations and it's a process that is uh, very slow and, and, well, very time consuming. And well, and when we have situations such as the one that we have had with the coronavirus, well, you can imagine this is a model which is quite rigid and it's not uh, easily uh, adaptable, uh, adaptable to change. So, uh, building on this, uh, back in year 2014, I think it was, well, some CIOs from the, from the Catalan Health System, we started a, a discussion, a strategic reflection, I would say, building on, on, the, on the good things that we have been able to build up to date, uh, which was, well, of course, uh, I was mentioning before, we have a mature ecosystem, uh, we have been able to implement very big systemic projects. We have achieved a lot uh, through interoperability. And as I was mentioning before, the, the first wave of digitalization was, was a successful one. And well, and I think Catalonia is a region that is recognized uh, more or less in Europe, uh, well, according to its adoption of, of digital health technologies. But for us, this, that, uh, this did not suffice. So we wanted to, to position uh, in a better way for, for the future. And that's when we started uh, thinking about building this uh, digital health uh, strategy for Catalonia. Uh, the process uh, took us more than one year. Uh, it was a systemic exercise. We did not involve any consultancy or, or any company in, in the process. So it was uh, something did or, or led uh, by a group of CIOs. And we involve more than 300 professionals within the Catalan landscape invol involving physicians, social workers, nurses, CEOs, CIOs, everyone within the Catalan healthcare system had the chance uh, to, to add uh, the reflections into, into the digital health strategy. Then uh, we were going to present this in between 2017 and 2018 during that Christmas, but well, due to some political problems that we had in here, it was not uh, it was not possible. But well, uh, 
we kept pushing for this to happen and uh, in January 2020, uh, we got the funding uh, in order to deploy the first phase uh, of this strategy that I, I will explain to you in the, in the forthcoming slides. And well, here we are trying to implement it and you know, uh, we got the money in, in, in January and then in March we were in the middle, in the middle of the COVID. So everything is uh, slower than expected, but well, still advancing. Uh, so the, the digital health strategy for Catalonia has uh, 15 different strategic lines. We have grouped them in these uh, five different vectors and of course incorporates uh, all these, uh, well, technologies of the digital transformation as, as you can imagine. We cannot left aside uh, AI, IoT and all these buzzwords, uh, digital therapeutics and all that sort of thing. Uh, which, well, all these taxonomies that are under the umbrella term for, for digital health. Uh, of course, uh, a very important part, all the, all the workforce development, uh, a similar strategy uh, as the one you have in the UK with uh, the Digital uh, Health Academy. But, uh, and well, another strategies uh, or strategic lines. But for us, uh, the most important one is, uh, I would say, the, the, the first vector, which is the construction of a new uh, electronic health record, uh, longitudinal, multi-provider, and with the idea to systematically replace uh, the current systems that we have uh, right now uh, in the Catalan healthcare system. At the very beginning, starting in, in, in primary care, because, well, I was telling you before, taking the opportunity that we have a unique system in there almost and that uh, system is quite uh, old fashioned and possibly has reached its maximum capacity of, uh, of technological uh, evolution. But well, first phase going in there and second phase starting uh, or integrating uh, hospitals. So, which is our view uh, in terms of the uh, technological architecture for, for this to happen? We are thinking about uh, a model that puts data in the middle of the model, and we want to uh, these models to be socialized and standardized for everyone. So, uh, for this purpose, we have selected Open Air as the, as the standard that will help us to build uh, this persistence layer and on top of that, well, we will put some layers of identity and privacy, of course, a platform NG, some process rules, uh, the informational, and then on top, in order to be able to build services and applications. The idea with this is that anyone within the Catalonian healthcare ecosystem, either a service provider organization, industrial partners, uh, startups, uh, software developers, they know which are the models, uh, clinical models, and its representation into the technical landscape for them uh, to be able to reuse them and build application on, uh, applications on top. We know that this won't be successful if all the ecosystem is not believing into our vision uh, for this future, and that's what we are uh, working on uh, right now. So, Mm, in short, and this is uh, the last uh, the last slide of the of the presentation, our idea, and that's what we are doing, is we are decoupling uh, the data from from applications. And I, as, as I was mentioning before, we are storing this data in an in an open format, which is the the format uh, of of open air. We truly think that uh, proceeding in such a way, and of course after uh, an adaptation period, we will manage to actually data to follow the patient and not be buried in this all these different silos that it's right now all these different data models different uh, standards blah 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 the idea is now to all of them be moved into this uh, unique uh, data model we know that this or we think that this will help us to 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 foster the integration and and the collaboration and well to promote all these collaboration models that are now emerging, uh, this concept of integrated care where professionals of different healthcare levels, but also from social care or even, uh, or even uh, volunteer organizations interact at the same time on the, on the same individual. We think that this will foster uh, this collaboration to happen. At the same time, we think that this will help us uh, for innovation to scale up 
uh, it will be easier. Uh, we will have uh, our ecosystem developing uh, applications and there won't be the need of uh, so many integrations uh, every time that we want to uh, introduce an innovation within the Catalan health system. Of course, this is not uh, an easy an easy process, and we know that, uh, as I was again saying before, uh, we need to involve all the all the ecosystem. Uh, in here, when it comes to the data models, uh, clinical staff uh, play a, a major role, and we have established and we are in the process of of, of building it uh, a panel of professionals that will be able to work in this uh, in these data models and help us importing from the from the international standard these data models and adapt them uh, into our reality but well for this to happen we also need uh, industry uh, or industrial partners to believe in this model so we are advancing uh, in 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 meeting them explaining with this which is our view and well trying to gain uh, engagement from all these parties for them, well, to get their resources, their human resources ready in order to be able to develop uh, applications uh, on the top of this. In here, we have built uh, on the on the previous experience of uh, our friends in, in Norway that, uh, well, you know, they already did this uh, some years ago. And for them, well, they told us it was very important to focus also in the in the industrial partners. And that's something that uh, that we are doing. And last but not least, I mean, uh, is uh, of course the, 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 the political commitment. Uh, such a big change uh, within the Catalan uh, health system landscape wouldn't be possible without uh, a proper uh, political commitment. Uh, the guys uh, who are ruling Catalonia right now, they have believed uh, in our view, which comes from the, from the technical perspective. And well, therefore, this is something that helps uh, well deploying the, the the strategy at at scale. And well, that was uh, my my presentation. I hope that uh, everything was uh, was understood. And well, happy to to engage and to answer uh, any questions you may have or, or anything in regards of the strategy you have in here. My my contact details and yeah.